All right. And thank you all for joining us today. We have a Talks at Google event for you that's really special and cool, cool, cool. We're here to celebrate the, <laughs> the fifth season of the NBC show Community. We're about in halfway through the run right now. We picked it up after the, the Olympics, and we're ready to, to sprint to the end. So it is our, our true honor today to have um, co-showrunner Chris McKenna. Yeah. We have Danny Pudi, how about Andrew Deer, Allison Bree, Andy Edison, and it's Dean Arific, Jim Rapp. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I have a few questions of my own. We'll have some questions from the audience as well, and we actually recruited some questions from human beings across the United States. So we'll go from them as well. Um, so to bring everybody up to speed, we got season five this season. Harmon's back. McKenna's back. Um, you filled all Hall H at Comic-Con. It was pretty amazing. So congrats on that. Um, what were the early days of shooting like? Um, was it business as usual or something completely different, new sense of purpose? How did you guys feel? I felt like everything felt back to normal, yeah. whereas there may or may not have been a season where things didn't feel as normal. <laughs> and then and then suddenly it was like, ah, yeah. putting on that pair of your favorite jeans. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know, I always have trouble finding good jeans. Yeah. That no, was no, not a good. Clearly, no, you're now <laughs> <laughs> It's like an old pair of jeans. That old yeah. pair of jeans oh. that still fits. Good old it's Wranglers. <laughs> <laughs> All those Cavaricis. <laughs> that haven't been washed in at least 10 weeks of pre-production. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> They're funny, yeah, though. They're like, sleep, like yeah, like you sleep in them on the couch. Yeah. They smell, but it's a familiar <laughs> yeah. smell. Yeah. yeah. Smell. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. good. So that's, yeah. So the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> comfortable. I think it's comfortable. I think. No, I did. Yeah, it, 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 it felt good. I think it, as soon as we had the first table read, we just felt like, oh, it was. Yeah. It was and it's also for us, too, like, I mean, we never thought we'd have a fifth season. So no. I mean, yeah. to actually have a fifth season and be like re-excited about it was really yeah. was really cool. I feel like more than any other year this year, everyone felt relaxed. Yeah. That's never been the case. The first year, it's like everyone's super excited because you're doing a show, and then you're you know the second year, it's like oh my god, we made it back, and then the third year was very tumultuous. You know, it's we've had such an up and down ride the whole time, and finally this year, I think one with us just having peace of mind of like. Well, anything could happen, and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You, you have to, because, you know, we were taken off the schedules. I mean, there's always been, uh, you know, an ax hanging over community's head. And in season three, you know, it, it seemed to have come down where we were taken off the schedule. So we were just making episodes. We didn't think they were ever going to air. Black hole of episodes. Um, yeah. And yeah, some That's of us dark. may have may have uh, <laughs> fell into the abyss, uh, <laughs> and it was probably reflected in a lot of the uh, it, it, stuff. Got really dark that year. I love that we, season, but we, we 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 definitely plumbed some some dark depths by the end. And uh, no, then what do you know? Back, we came back on in March, and because guess what? Eight o'clock. That's a tough time period. <laughs> Other shows, you know, get beaten up there too, and so we were put back to be the pummel, you know, to be pummeled on by Big Bang Theory, and uh, we're still here. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, was it difficult to transition back after being gone for a season from a, a writing and, and show running perspective, Chris? It was exciting. You know, I would say, you know, Harmon and I were really excited to go back. We were really, in, you know, invigorated. Um, we just wanted to get back to basics with the characters, um, there, and we were so happy there were no curveballs thrown our way, like. You know, main actors deciding that they were going to leave the show. <laughs> um, wow. we, we were we were we were very excited, and that, that disappeared very quickly. But unlike season three, where we were committing suicide, we were about to commit suicide. As Allison said, you just kind of go, look, you know, we've been through so much. Been through yeah. so much. Uh, maybe we were just numb to it, like an abused child. <laughs> we're just like, okay, we'll deal with it. It was sad, but we dealt with it. And I think, you know, uh, I don't know. How do you guys feel like we dealt with uh, what we had, what we had to contend with? I, think, I loved, I, like, like Community addresses a lot of things, I feel like we just go after them and then get rid of them. Like, <laughs> that sounded very violent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it but it's yeah, sort like, of we're... like, but it's sort of like, rather than things that are going to hang on for long periods yeah. of time where people thought, you know, cast members are leaving, are they going to, is, are they going to stretch it out over the whole season? Is it going to feel like a weird thing? It's like, no, let's just address, yeah. we all know he's leaving, the audience knows he's leaving, let's just address that. Talk about it, 
He's going to leave, and then life is going to go on after. Oliver. We'll find like someone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've moved Better on. and smarter and, and, and funnier. Yeah. I think John I'm, Oliver. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Banks. Yeah. No, so because there was, there was the idea of like, oh, do you want to spread that out? How, you know, if we only get five, you want to spread that over the through season. I'm like, oh, that's just like having like your your boyfriend has broken up with you, but he's and now just still like just hanging out and, yeah. and you know occasionally like you know stopping by in the middle of the night and no. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> which also be that weird thing where you we've all been there. Why he's not there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's on that trip. Yeah. 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 He'll be back in back <laughs> three to four yeah. weeks. <laughs> right. The camping trip he talked about. Last, weirdly, <laughs> weirdly wedged into his conversation yeah. last week. <laughs> yeah, and I, I guess to that end, you know, a lot, a lot has been already said in the press about the last day of filming with, with Donald Glover before he went off on the, the childish tycoon. But what I really want to know, what were the days leading up to the last day? Well, I, I mean, I've said this before because I actually think it's funny that we shot the episodes out of order. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so like the days leading up to his actual departure were totally uneventful yeah. for him. We were shooting, we were shooting Ash Crack Bandit, yeah. five, 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 which was technically 505, our fifth episode. So it was like we did all, I felt like everyone was very emotional when we were shooting the scene with the childish tycoon and he's gonna leave and, mm -hmm. and everyone's like, we're hugging him goodbye and it felt very real. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the next week we're like, hey. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 There's, the there's the one with the quarters in your butt. Yeah. Yeah. Ben That's Ben so Very normal. I, I, I was there for his here, very yeah. last shot and it was like five in the morning okay. on, on a Saturday going, uh, yeah. and it was literally a shot of Donald's butt bending over. Yeah. <laughs> like, <Simplism>. perfect. <laughs> he went out the way he came in. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he came in? Oh, yeah, no, no, Hear the story of how Donald got the job. Oh, oh, so nice. Oh, yeah. So um, bookend. Yeah, well, yeah. All right. That's good yeah. stuff. Yep. Also looking at season five, do any of you have any particularly favorite storylines that have been um, done so far? I'm excited about the episode that we have coming up. <gasps> yes. Yes. Uh, we have an episode where. What can I say about that one? Can, can, can I say, say what we do? The fight. The, the, yeah. The, yeah, I think I think that's I think that's already out there. So yeah, yeah just keep whispering in <laughs> the because they don't know we're talking about yeah, that okay episode. We talk about don't that one. Don't spoil, don't spoil the don't spoil the don't spoil the who's in the. Thing. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we have, we have an episode, episode coming up. It's great. It's a it's a great roommate episode. <laughs> it's a roommate episode. Yes, it's a roommate episode based on Troy leaving. So we yeah. have to find a new roommate. Can I say that? It's yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. We have to find a new roommate, and we're sort of yeah. vying for oh, our, our options yeah. <laughs> of the roommate. But to settle the score, yeah. settle the score? No, just uh, to settle to the score. Settle, well, to find Eight. a roommate. We're, we we play this like VCR, this like. 80s interactive VCR game. VCR, yeah. So <laughs> it's really. I, uh, they I, get a little into it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. really confusing and doesn't make any sense. And it was so confusing to shoot. <laughs> so good, because they we were trying to establish rules yeah. and they shot and separately so we're all just looking at like green X's on the screen and we're being and we're like coordinating uh, yeah. jumping up spinning around like shooting things pulling tokens rolling like, dice go token four yeah, yeah. Like, it was very yeah. and the two people tornado that tornado, tornado. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it <laughs> tornado, tornado! <laughs> We got uh, it. We still got it. We still got it, Chris. I think, still I think, got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Allison won, and Jim has to be your roommate now. Uh, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Um, it's a great, it's a great episode. Literally in real life. Oh. oh. Yeah. This is, <laughs> it was a fun That was our a show twist. Has gotten real like a little weird life and art <laughs> thing. Wow. Yeah, we're living oh, together. We're like great. shy uh, We have another <laughs> episode coming up where these three. Uh, oh, yeah. The three make a discovery mm -hmm. uh, and go on a little adventure or head up this adventure together. And I thought that the way you, the three of you, because each of you, each of your characters has a little bit of insanity and get, get and take things a little too seriously. Um, Thank you, Chris. But that's going to be the finale. <laughs> yeah. We have a two-part finale, and they they are they sort of sort of head the sort of Scooby-Doo mystery that yeah. that they they pull the rest of the group into. That episode was really fun for us because it was one of the few times where all three of us were paired together yeah. for the whole like storyline, and yeah. it was fun watching how crazy our energy was in yeah. scenes with everyone oh else. Oh my god, and then the other people would come in, and we'd be like in a like little, you know, <laughs> bottle, like shooting stuff, just the three of us, and then we'd bring in the rest of the cast, and they'd all be like, you guys gotta come. You guys, yeah. what has been going on this week? And they're like, yeah. no, it's okay, well, Rob Schraub and Chris said it's cool. No, no, no. They said right. it's cool to be this jump up and down and yeah. yell our mantra words yeah. to each other really loud, and then we'd start word. the scene, and everyone was like, what are you doing? Yeah. We've never it's, done this here. It's great, we, just, we, we were just editing that episode together, and you guys come bursting in and are 
very excited and feeding off each other, and it's insane. It's well, great. also, it's while we were shooting it, we didn't really know what we were shooting. Yeah. So that added to the manic yeah. energy. <laughs> the episodes were sort of being written as we went, and halfway through, we decided that one was coming before the other. Chris was yes. like, don't say that. No, 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 no. Oh, God, it's, it's <laughs> insane. We usually don't know what's happening, but it that was the last. A, that was a particularly interesting one where you and yeah. Dan were sort of on set being like, Here's what's happening. We're yeah. like, okay. Okay. We, okay. Shot the, we shot the second part of the two part finale before we shot the first part. But we didn't know it was. So, the and we didn't even know what was happening in the we first part. Yeah, so we didn't know where we were going. We just didn't know why. why? We were going there. I think the theory was yeah. look, we know they're gonna, we're going to send them on this adventure, and we're not sure how we set that up. And we'll just figure that out because we have to write the second part of it. You guys do code like that all the time, right? Yeah. This is, <laughs> it's Google. Same thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we may have we may have written ourselves into a corner, but I, I uh, no, I, I think I think it's going to turn out pretty. That's part of talking fun about of our stuff like too. really vaguely like this. Yeah, what can yeah. we tell them that maybe has some details? We're experimenting. I don't know. Yeah. Tell them a little about this this week's episode. Sure, they, they meow meow beans. Preview. Meow meow beans. Oh, yeah. oh, did you guys just watch the meow meow beans? Things get a little get weird. Yes, so we'll the, the be wearing a blousey shirt later. <laughs> Things descend into Logan's run on uh, because <laughs> er, because of this social media app where people are rated either a five, a four, a three, a two, or a one, and yeah. uh, everyone gets to rate each other. There's a whole hierarchy that's developed. We quickly. I love episodes like this where we start a cold open and then you cut to immediately after the commercials. The whole campus, everyone. One is immediately totally different board. language, new culture, new fashion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, within three minutes, yes. everything changes. This school changes on a dime. On a dime. The whole yes. New school costumes willing. are made. Yes. New worlds are created. Yeah. Classes. What classes? Classes. Yeah. No. No. Uh, yeah, no. So this one, this, it, it was weird. This was an experimental one where we didn't come out like a modern warfare paintball where we came out of the cold open. We thought, oh, no, no, we'll, we'll eventually get there. And, this, and that was a much harsher. And it was like, oh, wait, no. Now, it's so much better to have like the cold open than you go into lunacy, but when you, I think it works now. We, 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 we figured it out. But for a little while, they were like, oh man, did we break TV? Yeah. <laughs> I just but it's we were, definitely one of my favorite episodes. We were yeah. shooting in the right. study room, and they just kept bringing in random props. I don't know if you remember. And the white room? Yeah, and, and the, yeah, yeah, and yeah. The white room, and just oh, kept adding yeah. things and being like, we were discovering the environment while we were shooting it. And then they were it's adding a common theme people, of how we shoot. too. Yes. This, this episode is some of my favorite guest star appearances ever in our show. Oh, um, we have. Uh, I won't, but. Yeah. Tim, and, Tim well, and Eric, awesome show. Tim and Eric are in it. Um, Mitch Hurwitz, the creator of Arrested Development, is in it and hilarious. Yeah. Mitch Hurwitz is so funny so in this episode and was such a funny guy all the time. <laughs> I feel like it was our favorite week of shooting, just having Mitch around and everyone's like, do things. Do, do something. Talk in front of us. And everyone was on good behavior because we're like, and, and and whatever, you're making something else. Yeah, like, we're, we're available. We're probably we available. Act, you know, Look at this episode. Like, There's no I, way we're getting a sixth season. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people are wearing bed sheets, and it's nonsense. And it was the funny thing with Mitch, though, it was it, someone who had run a show before. It was the most disruptive. So disruptive. I, oh, I know. Yeah. It was like having a live animal on. on yeah. He just only wanted to do was like run around, not say his lines, and, oh, yeah. and be ridiculous. Uh, and, Luckily, he had some of the funniest ad libs. He was, yeah. uh, Mitch, just say, say it how it's written, and he'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he'd yeah. just go do a monologue <laughs> that, of his own device. Yeah, and then Ken Jeong would just be laughing hysterically and, and breaking every take. Ken no, it's not great. Stop laughing. No. Ken That's cannot right. stop laughing. Ken. That's why we're a million dollars over. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Ken is having a great time. But Ken has, yeah. we so do it a good time. We have a good time. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Nathan Fillion made a, a pretty yes. good Yes. Yes. I was actually, I was going to say, oh, that was, never mind. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what else? With Lapari, which was awesome. That was, that was a fun episode to shoot. Carry on. All right. <laughs> So, right, so I'd like to shift a little bit to the, the characterization and, and how things have, have changed in, in this season. So I'll start start with you, Danny. Um, so in last last week's episode, the um, bondage and beta male sexuality, um, Abed really had some very pivotal scenes, and the sort of got a lot stronger. I wanted to I wanted to say, um, how did you approach these scenes? Um, is Abed more comfortable being his his true self with this with this group of people, or is this just how he really is? Like, and what happened what to your nose? That yeah. yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> That's what too. So this episode, I broke my nose this season, and uh, that was the episode this last week where I broke my nose. So 
I don't know if you could tell. Only, only the episode where you had the most to do. Yeah. And the like, most close, most dramatic close ups. I broke, I break my nose. They're like, hey, we need you back on set um, as I'm coming from the doctor. And they're like, we, we want to try this mask on your nose. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I just broke my nose. They're like, yeah, we want to just see how this how this fits metal on the nose. mask. <laughs> yeah. just so we had to figure out that kick puncher mask. Um, but it was I love this episode because it was sort of like, how are we gonna address not having that Troy Abbott dynamic? And I think it was kind of fun to just be paired up with someone. And Jonathan Banks is very different, has a different sort of style, and it was it was fun. It was it felt like kind of different. It was just a new thing that we we talked about this this year. In mm -hmm. terms of acting, it was like it was cool this year because we had a chance to do very different stuff that we haven't yeah. really done. It was a lot, mm -hmm. we had two person scenes, we had some more slower paced scenes, which was really interesting. I think from the very beginning there was a decision and it felt like it, you guys, uh, one it was the repilot of it, but this evolution of all these guys, because you're yeah. dealing with the loss of a friend and coming through Jonathan Spank character in this new evolution of Abed. And I think that was across the board the mandate it felt like. It was, it was not just about pairing other people up, it just felt like it was about realizing that life moves on and these things people keep evolving mm -hmm. and it's a great thing that we've had with community because we don't know what's coming down the pipeline <laughs> but we're able to, to like push that story and just say well this is what happened last year and these are the ramifications mm -hmm. and I thought that was sort of a nice thing yeah. with that care that particular episode mm -hmm. when you watch it it's such a nice evolution of Abed and I think this year in terms of like I've said I think Abed's changed and grown the most this year than of all the seasons and some of it is because we had to deal with certain changes, but I think that was kind of cool, is because we took some of those things that were happening, like you know uh, Pierce being gone and Troy leaving, and we just applied it and, and just just see what else happened. So mm -hmm. I actually really liked it. I thought it was really fun to kind of have these two-person scenes where these two characters come from very different places, and um, and yeah, it was exciting. And You're gonna be excited when they when you get snubbed for an Emmy again. Oh yeah, yay. I'll be excited mm -hmm. for oh, that's you. Okay. If we come back for a sixth season, that's yeah. a good time. Uh, <laughs> So you were, I, that's one of my favorite episodes ever. And that's one of my, I mean, Danny, all of you guys kill it. That, that was just such a great you front and center, just mm -hmm. bringing, bringing, bringing that character to life. And, uh, and, and yeah, it was one of those things that were, like you said, we are, we're always trying, you know, I think the most interesting stuff on the show always comes from dealing with stuff that's actually happening mm -hmm. in the, in the reality of the show and, and, and writing up to it and dealing with, dealing with Troy's loss and not having to be this thing that's haunting you, but there's something we just had to address. And plus we have this new character that we loved mm -hmm. that we will really just go, oh, this guy's not going to be buying any of Abed's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really fun. And then, you know, and, and community is a place for broken people and, 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 and Hickey fits right into that mold and that sort of like that taxi sensibility of people who are, you know, still trying to figure out life and their own lives and no matter how old they are or how young they are. And I thought, I thought the two of you coming together in that story was really and, great. And we're also seeing a much more um, grown-up Annie this season. So yeah. anything that we should be on the lookout for? How a lot of you pants. Like so more, more pants. <laughs> more jeans. Mm -hmm. get it. <laughs> like the a lot of people more, on yeah. Twitter have been commenting on these pants. They're not going anywhere, people. Um, <laughs> are they mad about the pants? <laughs> Some people are mad about the pants. Really? Wow. But I can't related. believe a community We've fan shot. would have a really intense <laughs> <Strong> reaction. <laughs> reaction to this. A reaction to your pants. Um, <laughs> No, it's great, and that's something that I had talked to Dan a little bit about before we started, and we talk about Repilot and the characters moving forward, but also I think in moving forward, there was a lot of grounding them in sort of the stuff that made them who they were in our first season. So I felt like, you know, over the years, there was this departure from the original like go-getter Annie that was like very determined and a hard worker and ambitious and, and all that stuff and uh, that had gotten muddled and this year we've really returned to it and her being a sort of moral center for the group and but but is crazy in that way that's that's her craziness <clears throat> craziness but <laughs> it's coming out of me. <laughs> um, but it's really fun. I love. I way prefer. I just much prefer that side of her um, because I think it's it's it gets the other characters going. It's like a much more interesting way to interact with characters rather than just like having a crush on them mm -hmm. or something like that. And it's back to like season one when she and uh, Jeff were working for like the newspaper and she's like, I've got a major scoop. Things like, like I kind of like Annie in a like detective position or that we're having her forensics, the criminology. I loved the Ass Crack Bandit episode. That was so fun to shoot. It's, I just like that side of her. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Yeah. 
And yeah. in gym, I guess we have much more of the faculty dynamic this season as mm -hmm. well. So um, what's that been like? How have things been different for well, your life Dean? We, yeah, because well, we've got John Oliver and then, you know, Professor Hickey added and then obviously Jeff's evolution, you know, uh, it's been fun. I mean, you know, instantly it was fun just because, uh, once again, the dean is not allowed to be in a certain area. So that was <laughs> established very quickly that I wasn't allowed in the teacher's lounge. Probably helped them get half of that stuff. <laughs> so I just like that there's, it was nice because the dean just really still loves a school that seems to fight against him every step of the way, you know, because his ideas are so horrible. But, um, <laughs> which makes sense. But, you know, it was an interesting, again, I think that speaks more to what's the evolution of Jeff, which was so nice. Mm -hmm. to put him in this position where he's between his friends and this new sort of career mm -hmm. that he's probably fighting tooth and nail to be a part of. And, and obviously, the, uh, Hickey is such a great sort of roommate, if you will, for that. So I, it was, it's, again, it just sort of fit the whole big picture. Awesome, awesome. And you know, when Dan originally pitched the show, he said it was about an, an asshole who learned to love strangers. So is that is that still true? How do you approach like the overall you know character? I think arcs? Dan loves some people now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think, no, I, it's funny, I think, you know, I mean, I, I think Dan, obviously uh, Jeff is a stand-in for, uh, for Dan in a lot of ways. I think every one of the characters he created is a different facet of Dan. Um, but yeah, Jeff's, you know, I think it, it came out of, it came out of Dan, Dan going to actually Glendale Community College and, and getting pulled into a study group and, and, and something, and, and, you know, and he's admittedly, I think, sort of an antisocial person. Um, and I, I think watching that evolution, it's the same thing with Dan. Dan wouldn't, you know, his first instinct is not to sit in a room full of other writers and write. He wants to hole up and do his thing. Um, and I, and I, think, I think an interesting meta element to all of this is that as Dan has said, is that he was forced because of how the system is set up is he has to hire writers and he has to sit in a room with people and he has to hear different ideas. And, um, uh, and I came on first season and was, you know, one of those, one of those people I'm, I'm sure he, he hated because I opened my mouth and I, you know, like, every, you know, and, but I, I think he, he, he grew to uh, sort of love, love the, the strangers uh, that he was writing with. And I think that is definitely reflected in, in Jeff's journey um, in the show. And when, and when writing these characters, do you have an idea of where you want everyone to end up, like this happily ever after world, or? We really uh, try not to. I think, I think that's when we, get it, we write ourselves into trouble. When you, when you already know what the end point is, I, I, I think we write ourselves into troublesome areas. And that, that, I would say third season, Dan had to go to NBC, and he had, to, he had to pitch the whole season out to, this is what we're doing, this is everyone's arc, this is their four, you know, f uh, you know, four quadrant arc. And for the season, down to, you know, from, from Jeff to, to Chang. And, and I think great stuff came out of that, but I think those kind of things, then they bind you, and then you're, you're feeling, like, oh, well, you know, this is where Chang is no longer, he's head of security, but this is before he takes over the school, and it, you just find that you're, you, you don't have fun just to be in the sandbox and create with the characters. And I, I love third season, and I think we were able to do that. We were able to do something like multiple timelines and have the episode where the two of you guys went in the dreamatorium. And, yeah. and um, uh, but I, you know, I, 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 think, I think setting, it's so much fun to, to discover a journey rather than, than, than set an end point and say this is where it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and so how are things in, in the writer's room? Are you still writing to the wee hours of the morning, the night before We wrapped shoot, in or? December and we're still writing. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Not <laughs> we, have an animated, we have an animated episode that Dan and I have definitely, definitely uh, uh, had a recent all-nighter. Uh, <laughs> like, are you kidding me? It's now January, and we're pulling on our all-nighter. It's going to be great. Um, we're, we're actually great. We doing it next week. What's that? I said we recorded. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're actually going to record it. Oh, it airs, and it airs the following week. <laughs> we're doing a, an animated episode uh, that is in the style of uh, the uh, 1980s animated series GI Joe. Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's it's really fantastic. Cool. Cool. And, and I guess along that line, too, one of the things that I think community does really strongly is, is lampoon pay homage to a variety of, of TV genres, TV shows. You know, you did the Nicolas Cage episode, so you sort of have that checkbox done from, from years and years. So yeah. anything else on the, on the docket that you'd like to do or um, you any, know, any unexplored territory? Dan and I always, you know, it's funny, we were meeting with writers last year, and we're like, look, 
We're not going to be concept first. You know, we're not going to do that. So when we get into trouble, we're not going to go, oh, we're doing, you know, Logan's Run episode. Or we're not going to say we're doing another D&D because then, you know, the tail's wagging the dog. Cut to bashing our head against the wall going, why did we say we're doing another Dungeons and Dragons episode? How are we going to crack this story? Um, I, I, if, 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 a story, if a story then takes on an element that has a concept to it, that has you know, the, a feeling of a genre, then we'll run towards that. But um, we really do try not to just say, oh, now we're doing our, you know, our buddy cop space movie. Because yeah. then, <laughs> then we're bashing our heads going, wait, how, how is Abed on the moon now? <laughs> <laughs> why, why? Why is that the moon? See. That makes no sense. Yeah. Um, so um, that said, we have some concepts itself. coming. And, and, uh, <laughs> The G.I. Joe one. This week's definitely takes a very sci-fi-ish yeah. kind of feel to it. Um, 70s sci-fi. Sort of 70s sci-fi, <laughs> Logan's Run inspired. Rob Schraub directed it. And he's like, and we, we Rob is brilliant. He's Dan's old partner. They created Heat Vision and Jack together. And he's a brilliant director, really vi has a great visual style. And we let we let him run. <laughs> There's stuff that you will see in this episode. I like. I we've yeah. <laughs> we got going. If anyone from the studio or the network came by right now, oh. you dressed in white robes in a yes. white room with orbs on your hand, doing I mean, a crazy Buck Rogers yeah. dance, yes. they would shut us down. But luckily, they, they, don't, they don't ever come it. to they this. Don't come by. No one knows yeah. we're still doing this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we're winning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite visual of I think the year is in this episode. The first time you see Hickey. In yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. I, I, I right. just need to say that because it is. I remember when I when I showed up on set and I didn't really know what was going on in the episode and I already saw him in the wardrobe. Yeah. And I was shocked. And yeah. I, this is after five seasons of doing this show. <laughs> I was shocked by what I was seeing. That was a good feeling. Uh, no, <laughs> definitely. Rob Rob took the visuals of this episode and ran to Crazy Town with them. And I, it's really one of my favorite episodes. It's really and Ludwig did a our composer did a really cool uh, synth uh, uh, <laughs> uh, treatment of the music for it. And I'm probably giving way too much away, but watch it this Thursday. Well, right. This Thursday. You'll still watch it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we have it on the DVR. Everyone's like, they know they heard on the Google Play. They're like, heard it up. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and I think another um, fun trope that's been going around is the idea that all the NBC um, shows are set in this sort of similar universe. So you have Community and Chuck doing a slight overlap, and then it sort of expands to things like like Cougar Town, for example, and Parks and Rec. Like, what what crossovers is the world ready for now? Like Annie is the next Leslie Nope. You know, Ron Swanson after some chicken fingers. Um, mm. Run, they're running out of shows, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so you cross over it. I mean, I mean, or there's what? There's Parks and Rec and us. So like we're the last man standing. What yeah. game night? Can you, yeah, do a community game night. A community game yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah. Well, Gre Greendale in Colorado and Chicago Indiana. Chicago PD. Too far away. Yeah, I okay. Chicago Fire. Chicago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the Parks and Rec crossover idea. Yeah. Yeah. So many good people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so many, so many possible people. possibilities for robots? connections yeah. <laughs> to meet different people. Well, I'm sure there, there's criminology in Pawnee that needs answered as well. Yeah. So, um, so we're, where we'll, there is criminology. Oh lord, those pants are. I'll be there. <laughs> those pants. You will not find those jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, so we'll have time for a few audience queue, uh, questions. So if you want to queue up, we can um, go to those. I have some as well about community, the future. Ooh. So you know, coming up on 100 episodes, that's really a, a good milestone, great milestone for, for a lot of TV shows. What does that, what does that mean to you? And um, well, we're not quite that. there yet. Yeah, we got. Well, we got 97. So yeah. 97. 97. Or yeah. 96 if we don't finish this animated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're very close. Yeah, 97. That's I don't know. I feel like 100. You know, it's you know, yeah, it's 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 arbitrary, I guess. I, I I'm excited about the our own arbitrary one that the fans created, the six seasons in a movie. If we could actually pull that off, I think that would be the way to end this this mother, mm -hmm. <laughs> land it, we'll all pat each other on the back, yeah. see each other. I don't know, a Donald's FX show, <laughs> doing doing cameos, catering, cross yeah. crossover. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, speaking of, of the uh, the homages to other shows, you have you know the Scrubs the um, Scrubs theme, you know who's the boss, etc. 
Um, picture some unknown show in the future, like, you know, show to be determined. What do they need to do to capture the essence of a community illusion? Kind of 1.0. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Whew. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think smashing people who seemingly don't seem like they should be friends are put together in one place. That's one thing we did. That is a thing we did. <laughs> It would be tough to do pants? a community homage. I don't know how don't people know. would, because our, our show to yeah. me yeah, is so many different things. things. I don't think so we different. have a specific voice, which is so wonderful about the show. It's like staring it? into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> like putting a mirror into a mirror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Infinity. Cool. I guess we have some audience questions. Go ahead, sir. Hi. Um, I'm wondering when you guys have the movie, which you're obviously going to have, yeah. Um, what uh, what do you wish you could do in the movie? Like, if if it were up to you guys, what's something you would love to do in the movie? Like, you can't do in a TV show format. Time travel. Yeah. Because that's when? that happens in movies. Yeah. Movies, yeah. yeah. Not TV. <laughs> TV yeah. doesn't do TV any of that. But do. we can. None. No, I can't think of yeah. one time travel TV show. We can make show. it work in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a long one. Not a short one. Movies. Time travel, you can do that in movies. I would just be so interested to see who we're going to cast as your characters. Well, I mean, they're going to be really. As long as I get a great, shot of that. Great, yeah. great. Oh, as long my God. As I get to Chris come Evans back is and Abed. Like, yes. Oh, it'll be all such like, a good, he'd be a better Abed. Oh, my God. Yeah. A list oh, to play in our parts yeah. would be Finally. fantastic. It would be nice to do a movie Marriott. where there's something, a uh, movie in the movie with A list actors playing us. Yeah. That yeah, watching that would be ourselves. Very, well, at the very least, the trailers, just to trick people into the theater. I think the exciting the thing about a movie would be getting to shoot outside. Oh. Yes. yes. The idea yes. of what it would look like if sun naturally hit our face. Yeah. <laughs> People always because ask us, like, I would look so at? much better like, in real life. We shoot inside of one stage, everything, one, always. Yes. Uh, well, everything that was inside. We used to go outside, yeah. and then, you know, things happen. Yeah, but the <laughs> accountants sit there, the calculator, going, nope, sun is too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> nope. Stay inside. We got makeup for that. Well, no, no, yeah. We got makeup to look like you've been outside. Yeah. Uh, no, I, honestly, that was one of the things like, I've been saying to Dan, if there's a, if there's a sixth season, um, I've got to figure out a way to get back outside. I mean, because it's so, uh, it's just expensive. You know, they just say, you know, we, we definitely, you know, there was, a little, there was a little episode called Hot Lava that, that, that broke the bank very early on and had people yelling, doing this a lot for the rest of the, like, for the next three months. No, no, no. And I... <laughs> No. That's why, like, let's, not, let's not do let's not do concept <laughs> episodes anymore. Let's just ha let's just at least be able to go outside to the Lucy Park, you know. Yeah. And it's funny, I was I, I catch occasionally like I'm flipping channels and I see like you know episodes where I'm like, oh yeah, that we, right. we used, we to, used go to walk outside. through the quad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were, our first scene, we were walking, walking outside. Walking outside. Oh, felt so good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Aren't you excited to see outdoors? <laughs> yeah. Aren't you excited to go sit in a dark theater and watch the sun? We don't need <laughs> As Crack Bandit, you guys were outside Borchert Hall, but it was raining. Uh, yeah. 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 So you can step just outside. Just, you just, just step outside, yeah. Bring a new light of day to the community. Thanks. Thank you guys so much. Uh, go ahead. Um, Jim, what's your favorite uh, costume that the dean has worn? Uh, in all the... All the years? Yeah, across the five Across the, the universe. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I always, you know, I feel like uh, I can't never not reference the, the five entrances from, you know, yeah. uh, our, our first clip first episode. flashback first episode. Clip episode. Yep. Because it was just such a joy to shoot because they just sort of set the camera up and I would run off, get made up into the new one, come in while uh, Gillian and Jeff would, just, I mean, and, and Joel would just change a little outfit yeah. and put on a remote control car. We don't know what that storyline was. Well, that was, was. A, that was a callback uh, oh, to yes. when you guys, when the, the quadricopter, when oh, you guys got into the quadricopter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think that whole sort of run of costumes was great from Tina Turner to... You made to, a hot Tina Turner. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, yes. I learned how to walk in high heels that year, that's for sure. And I liked, now I, I liked can't the stop. <laughs> 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 New York fashion outfit. week. I'm yeah. I will say, uh, in not this week, but the following week, the dean is in a costume and oh. also does one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yes. Yes. It's episode 509, um, and... Uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. Probably, uh, well, let's say it peanut. Was a blast. I'll just say the word peanut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was a very, it was, it was a blast, but a stressful blast. Oh but it was, my God. It was worth it. 
well. Yeah. Anyway, you'll see. <laughs> it's in the cold open. You don't even have to watch it after that. You just watch the first yeah. two minutes and then go. <laughs> yeah. But and then over to Bazinga. And go on to your life. Yeah. I don't even remember what happens in the rest of that episode. Um, that's the roommate episode. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. So you get. Yeah. yeah. So you get, already forgot us. You get two great things. Yeah. You get yeah. the, I mean, the, the long story you told about the roommate thing. And yeah. This and one, then this, cold this one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It sort of ties it all together. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, Thanks, and well, since no one's behind me, I can quick follow up. Uh, Danny, um, in your words, <laughs> Nicolas Cage, good or bad? Oh, yeah. Ooh. In your words. That was on the list. In your words. <sighs> good. <laughs> good job. Thank yeah. you so much. Nailed it. I, really yeah. about it. Yeah. I think it's good. I think we do need that. That person on top is question whether it is good or bad. I think good. Okay. <laughs> now we're just gonna run a 20 minute take of you doing Nicholas. Okay. Yeah. We have so many outtakes from that. Yeah, just we were just watching him on the monitor and howling and then they'd make him do it again. <laughs> yeah, talk about like having to get rid of any self-consciousness. Sexy cat. When, Sexy cat. When me and Dan Harmon are behind like the set practicing Nicholas Cage impressions. Oh. And just doing sexy Dan's cat pretty good. Dan's, Dan's pretty really good. good. Yeah. Um, yeah, sexy cat. So is that a um, DVD special feature we should be on the lookout for? Should be. I'm sure. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Cool, good I stuff. I hope so. Um, another thing oh, that we, speaking, okay. of, speaking of DVD, I was thinking, uh, you remember at the first uh, DVD, the end of the year, Dan did employee performance reviews? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Should you guys do peer performance reviews? How did you guys do this season? Oh. Oh. Wow. Nice. Allison and Danny, do Jim. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jim. Mm-hmm. That speaks volumes. Yes. <laughs> Me, that's how I check. Jim. Wait, aren't you supposed to yeah. evaluate me? Yeah, there, you're, are we? You're yeah, asking. This <laughs> feels just like it. Yes. Um, you're evaluating me. You want me to say how I felt? Mm -hmm. Why don't we start there and just see where that leads us? I <laughs> felt like I did my best. <laughs> like I could do what I. I feel like the. Um, you can cry. You can cry. I'm, uh, I did what I thought I should do. That was great. <laughs> next. Next. <laughs> next. You, do you have you a you have a question, sir? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I think community's done a great job of being absolutely not normal at all in every way. Um, I'm curious if you guys have ever considered any cliche ideas like actual couples developing or uh, long-term romances like you seem to see in all the other sitcoms these days. Three cameras. That's sort of the, the thing that's keeping us from being a popular sitcom? Yeah. <laughs> you wanna see? Mm. I don't know, I mean, how do you guys feel? Well, it happened last season, you know, Britta and Troy dated mm -hmm. for the entire season. Well, and then they broke up. We just sort of saw their entire relationship over the season. And I thought it was super weird. I don't know. I thought it was strange. I think the problem is that we've set up this group as such a thing, and it's the group is the a thing. Family. It's a yeah. family. It's a family. Fa and even though we've made all these jokes in the first season about how everyone could be sexually attracted to yeah. everyone, and I still think that's true, it just functions as a family and everyone loves each other and it's this unit and it just seemed it just seems a little forced or something feels unnatural i feel like when you try to go too far in that direction i mean i i love the jeff and annie stuff i love working with joel and i love exploring that chemistry but but even that by now feels like it would be so strange to just be like jeff and annie are dating now and they're like walking down the halls holding hands like <laughs> It's, it just it doesn't quite fit our show. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's tough because I know there's lots of people out there, the shippers, who, who, who want Annie and Jeff or Annie and, I mean, uh, Annie and Britta. <laughs> Annie and Britta, there, are, there are those people. Uh, I, I stumbled onto that page, that page <laughs> accidentally. Uh, stumbled no, or, onto <laughs> it. <laughs> um, or, you know, Jeff Britta or just shipper, they just want, they just want somebody, something to be shipping. It's, it is tough because when you created a family like this, uh, you don't really, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bottle that's tough to, uh, you know, to, you know, once you uncork it, to cork. And uh, it's one of those things we've talked about and, and um, I don't know, I know, I know a lot of other sitcoms do it and I will say, the romance stuff on other sitcoms, and it's just my taste, I usually, I'm not that 
interested in it. I'm not interested. I'm interested in how these people are relating as friends, how they've betrayed each other as friends, whether you know the the, the, the paternal elements that that Jeff has, or whether he's acting like a child, you know, in relation to some of the other characters. It's always more interested, interesting to, to me, but you know that I'm super asexual. I don't know. Well, I was gonna say our characters are almost kind of asexual. Like I know. none of our characters are really like sexy. I mean, I guess Jeff well, is. Well, well okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I apologize. Like I'm, I'm, I'm super so sexy. I apologize. I feel like I'm very sexy. But. <laughs> <laughs> Adina is very sexy. It's just really and Jeff, sexual man. And Jeff is sexy. He's a director now. You can't say those things to yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> well, in person, I'm talking about our characters. No, 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 I get it. We'll talk later. Yeah. <laughs> but I do feel like everyone's sort of interested in other things. And it, that's just not, doesn't seem to be like a high priority for these people. Also, I mean, that said, I do find it interesting when we see other people brought in to be love interests right. outside the group. That, I think, is, is interesting. I, and I think, I think you know, um, we'll see how, if, if the show even continues, and how, how romance will, will rear its head. And it seems to me that that's the way to do it, um, if, you're, if, you're gonna, if you're gonna do it. And, you know, the circling the wagons of these people who are now like brothers and sisters, uh, like when, when a stranger enters the midst and, and uh, being threatened by it. I mean, obviously there's still, we, we still have, there's still feelings there. And I think these characters are so still confused about themselves and their lives, <laughs> yeah. that they don't know, you know, I, I think sometimes they, they you know, there is some, there is some, you know, Jeff, you know, uh, stuff coming up, you know, in terms of his feelings about people in the group, and um, I, I think still like, he does not, he has a hard time um, differentiating between whether something is, you know, erotic love or. Yeah. Or 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 the fr love of of, of the, these people that he cares so deeply about. Yeah, and along those lines, Coat Check Girl, will we see any any more? On the oh yeah, thread? they start dating. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's someone outside the group. Outside the group. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. Uh, Brie Larson, who's great, um, um, has is we have uh, coming up in an, uh, in five zero nine. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's great. So. Cool. I, I, I had a few small questions as well. And one, one thing that I really um, enjoy about Community is just you know the, the amount of callbacks. You know, Britta got the iPad Nano this season, so check mark on that. Like, how do you keep track of all that? Is there a master list of things that you need to go back yes. from? Or you it's called fans on Twitter constantly email, <laughs> constantly, constantly bothering Harmon about when's 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 uh, Britta gonna get her iPad Nano? We go, oh yeah, and so it worked out perfectly. No, but believe me, uh, that that's the system. People don't <laughs> stop bothering Dan, and uh, and uh, thank God, because that was a, it was a great callback. Yeah. Another question. I, uh, yeah, um, I have a question for Jim. Uh, you suddenly, like, for Freaky Friday, you got to suddenly write for these characters who you were like alongside for most of the show. Mm -hmm. Has like suddenly having more power over the universe uh, given you like this like feeling of it has the power corrupted, basically, is the question. Are you asking if personally... I mean, he he's very sexy. Yeah, yeah. well, I, you mean... <laughs> if, do I, he is. Yeah. Personally, do I have sexual. more power now that that happened? <laughs> um, I feel like these two put me on a pedestal. <laughs> is that fair? Oh, I worship you immediately. I'm, thank yeah. you, thank you. Yeah. No, I, you know, I, I was so lucky to have had that experience because, you know, at least I, uh, I love this show uh, sort of unconditionally, and I and I and I I feel like the the beauty of getting to write community is that the voices are so clear, and what was created was so clear. Um, so no, I, I you know because I I always uh, to answer your question, no, I don't think it changed <laughs> anything to me other than that I got an opportunity to do something that uh, was was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Well, it's not every day we have an Academy Award winning. Um, person in on, on the show, so it was very nice. You speak yeah. so eloquently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, another few small questions. Um, what do you think happened to the cool study group over the past five seasons? The one with um, oh, Jack one was Robot. in a movie about Google, I thought. Yeah, well, that's yeah. Oh. <laughs> internship, college. I should have known that question, that answer when I wrote the question. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and you also had a big reveal about Starburns this year. Um, what do you think he's been up to since the days of the uh, the Ass Crack Bandit? Probably doing a lot of meth. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
he, he does he does do math. Yeah. He, does. he does like it. Uh, build it well, you know, uh, definitely researching cat cars. Um, I love a cat car. And uh, no, lurking. hoarding, <laughs> lurking, <laughs> lurking. He's like that movie Bad Ronald. I think he's just sort of living in the walls of Greendale and <laughs> stealing people's food, and watching yeah. them. But using anything you can do probably to smoke and try to get high, I'm guessing. Yeah. Cool. I mean, the, the, you know, the repercussions of something, doing something horrible at our school has very little. They're very little. Yeah. 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 As far as I'm concerned, he's just wandering, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. He took a bullet, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I think he, the, the best thing about uh, Greendale is it just sort of erases what happened. <laughs> Let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, no, we got something else. We got, like, there's a fire in the cafeteria, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, no, there's yeah. always some new nonsense to distract everyone. Yeah. So the dean's is... always got some new harebrained scheme. Right. Yeah. When well, the dean is the rug under which everything gets swept. Oh, there's a, there's a paper trail leading to every single character and what they did wrong. So I feel like it's okay. Everyone's in the same boat. <laughs> we got right. We're in the same Look, we fucked up. We get it. <laughs> So, and, and you all display some really, really cool hidden talents. And I actually saw Allison in concert a few weeks ago at SF Sketch Fest, oh, which was pretty amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for So, my, my pleasure. <laughs> I, I'm glad that the tickets worked out. And um, is, is there anything else that we'll be seeing hidden talent wise um, or that you'd like to display? Danny. March 12th, I have a ESPN 30 for 30 short coming out called Untucked on mm -hmm. Grantland. Please watch it. It's about basketball jerseys and why I should never be playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, he directed it I directed and, it. and, yeah. and everything. Wow. He directed it. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it coming yeah. out? Say it again. It's um, it's an ESPN 30 for 30 short called Untucked on Grantland. Um, What's Grantland? Grantland's a website. It's okay. an ESPN -ish kind of website about you know sports um, topics of the day and that kind of thing. So every month they have a short now, uh, and it's a little peek into Marquette basketball history, their jerseys. Um, it's fun. It's about 1977's championship team and a jersey that was designed by Bull Ellis, a player on the team. Wow. So check it out. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anything on, on your, your deck, no. too? No. 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 <laughs> Still like going by the beach, <laughs> watching people go down the, the water slides. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much it. No, yeah. Just uh, uh, back to writing, you know? Trying to. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And that was really boring. <laughs> Writing's important. Just directed a Fox pilot. Yeah. Come on. Yes, we did do that. You just got to go hang out in Burbank and watch people test we, it. We we tested it. Yes. No, Matt and I did direct a, po a pilot for Fox, so we'll see. Very right, cool. Um, and I also, you know, from Vicky to Fat Neil to Garrett, I really like the the backstories that are so so prevalent in in the be supporting characters. Um, are there any cool anecdotes um, with working with them that you'd like to share? Or? You guys work with them probably more closely. No. Well, I would like to say before anecdotes that that I love all, the, our yeah. supporting characters are a great mm -hmm. like the fabric that makes up Greendale the college and it's so like over the years we've just held on to so many of them and they're all wonderful like, there people a, there except for Paradox years. was my favorite and he's there never was two years back. where we'd <laughs> always say I agree to this <laughs> And that was his one line. It was his one line. And then there was an episode later where somebody was like, it's a paradox. And I was like, they're not going to have, you know, paradox. paradox walk by in the background. I was that fan on Twitter like, mm, excuse me, hey, dear what, community. What is paradox, <laughs> paradox going to be by? And it never happened. Opportunity missed. Yeah. <laughs> but magnitude, all of them. Um, I mean, I think magnitude it's so cool about our, our, our show is that all the, the characters are so specific that they do really fit into this mm -hmm. world. And Leonard. Oh, Leonard. 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 <laughs> and we love them. And they and they end up, and you guys end up sort of writing stuff for them or letting them do stuff that speaks true to them as well. In the um, Hot Lava episode, everyone's, you know, we're all on Shirley Island and the island's going to go down and people are like yelling confessions and Magnitude is like, I'm actually British because the actor that plays Magnitude is British. <laughs> <laughs> So. And those were really um, uh, Eric Charles Nielsen's only pair of pants. You couldn't <laughs> get them dirty. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Comes back maybe. To pants. <laughs> so, so my, my last question. Um, not every show has its own fan-sponsored con, video game, spin-off series. Um, what message do you have for the fans as we enter the, the home stretch for season five? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's you know, it, it, honestly, it's it's the it's no matter 
no matter whether it's a rerun of Big Bang Theory, which gets like a 2.9, or a new episode <laughs> that gets a 5.1, there is, a, uh, there is a, a little tiny army of people who love the show as much as we do who show up and watch it live, don't you? And, and no matter what happens, we still get, you know, or unless we'll see what happens this week, but we still get like the same 3 million people showing up week in and week out. And, uh, <clears throat> and the, the, you know, in, 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 this, in this changing TV landscape, to have, to have people um, uh, still showing up and loving the show, is, is, it, says, it says a lot. And that's the reason why this, this, little, this little show that probably should have died after the end of season one uh, is, is coming, to, you know, coming, you know is, is halfway through its fifth season. So. Right. Yep. Well, with that, um, hashtag six seasons in a movie. I wanted to <laughs> thank you all for, for stopping by today. So, a round of applause.